Joining me now here on the MMA Report is the man that's going to be taking on Rory McDonald in the final final quarterfinal matchup in the Bellator Welcome to a Grand Prix, it's John Fish. John, uh, really appreciate the time. Obviously, you have fought a who's who in this sport. Do you think there's any correlation in terms of this matchup against Roy to the time that you took on GSP for the UFC title? Uh, no, I, I think they're they're completely different fighters. Um, but, uh, you know, other than the fact they're both Canadian. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I think Roy doesn't have that uh, sexy... Uh, accent i mean it, it's been a long time i mean we're talking 11 months since since your last fight uh do you try to more take out the, the pauses of that in terms of it, it gave you uh you know all the time in the world to prepare for this fight uh you know every fight is a learning experience you know um i took a lot away from that fight and uh you know made a lot of adjustments in order to to get better and be better um but yeah, it was, uh, you know, something that helped prepare me for the future. And uh, I think every fight, you know, if you're not learning from every fight, you're like, what are you doing? Was there was there something that really stuck out about that last fight that, that kind of made you realize you needed to tweak some things? You know, the last fight was, uh, was very good. But, uh, yeah, there were some things I needed to adjust about that. Um, you know, anytime you can, you you, uh, you lose momentum, you've got to reset and try to gain the momentum back. So, you know, there was times in the cage where Daly was uh, holding onto my gloves and kind of stalling things out. I should have backed up and allowed the, you know, allowed him to progress into a different position rather than trying to force. Because I was waiting for him to to to, uh, to turn and face me, where there was a couple chokes or some ground and pound positions to open up. Or I was, I was waiting for him to turn more to his stomach where I could attack chokes. Um, but he didn't do either. He held on to my gloves and yelled at the ref to stand us up. So I, I should have, you know, backed up and then re-entered and tried to maintain and, and gain the momentum a little bit back. But I was kind of overly fixated in, in one finish. I've been working on I've been working on a couple of different finishes. I saw the fight, uh, vision, envisioned the fight, I drilled and... Uh, worked on through sparring uh, to get him out in a certain way. But I, I, I probably, probably should have backed off of that in order to let things happen a little more organic, organically instead of forcing it. I think a lot of people obviously remember that fight where, you know, Paul was complaining about, you know, the, the wrestling aspect of the fight. Back in February, did you get a good laugh just watching him wrestle Michael Page? I I really I thoroughly enjoyed the fight. I like strategy, so um, you know if that was part of his strategy to set that up to like, oh, I hate wrestling. Wrestling's awful, and then he's gonna come out and win the fight and advance because he wrestled. I think that's that's smart. I like I like strategy, so that that's the part of the sport that I like because there's so many different aspects to attack the fight and to win the fight. And if all you're doing is going out there to kickbox, like go do kickboxing. I don't understand why guys want to just kickbox in a sport like MMA. Like it, I think it robs themselves and it robs everybody of the experience of, of uh, the cerebral part of the sport. I want, to, I want to see strategy. I want to see you implement a game plan. You've been around this sport for a long time. What, is it merely that the title, the motivation that, that gets you up every day? Uh, no, it's fun. It's just fun. Like Training is fun. Hanging out at the gym is fun. Um, talking to people, doing interviews is fun. Uh, you know, making fat checks is fun. So, uh, you know, it's a good time. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's going to be hard to walk away from it. But, you know, uh, I got this tournament I want to win. Maybe put in one more and then uh, I'm probably going to be done. So I'm, I'm soaking it up right now because I know it won't last forever. Obviously, Roy Roy's a great fighter. Fans have had a chance to see him over the years. Is there something he does well that fans just don't notice, but it's something you have noticed in preparations for this fight? I mean, he's tough. He's durable. He doesn't quit. He's going to keep coming forward. So uh, you've got to be prepared to to uh, to fight the full twenty five minutes hard. You know, you have to win every scramble. You have to win every position. You you can't let up. You can't lose your uh, your fight momentum. You got to control the distance. You know, he's just he's just a tough guy. What do you think your key to victory is? Uh, just being me and doing what I do and doing it well. You know, being on and putting on pressure and uh, staying consistent with that pressure. 
Scott Coker mentioned a couple of weeks ago that the plan is for the winner of this fight to have a, a relatively uh, you know, quick turnaround and have the semifinal matchup in June. Uh, you know, he said that uh, both you and Rory were, were down for that. Was it? Was it just? Is is it merely the fact of hey, I've, I've been on the sidelines for the last eleven months. I, I want to try to, you know, get this train rolling and, and not be you know sitting on the sideline for a, a lengthy period. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, I'm not getting any younger. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather fight right now rather than wait until I'm 42. You know, uh, it's it's not going to benefit me any to wait longer <laughs> for these fights. So uh, I'm perfectly happy with, uh, you know, making the quick turnaround. You know, as long as everything's healthy and operating okay, I'm not going to risk long-term health in order to get the fight done, but I think things should be okay. You know, one of the things I know you, you do a lot with, uh, you know, your YouTube channel, your Patreon, is talking about, you know, the, the, the shakes that that you do. Is there something that, that you have heard from fans about that that has, has surprised you in, in terms of maybe the interest level in that or kind of how you, uh, you know, take care of your body? Uh, yeah, I think there's, you know, a lot of guys on my shake break, they're, they're younger guys, you know, 20s and, and early 30s. Um you know, they're interested in, in, in self-care. A lot of them are guys who maybe didn't have, you know, masculine role models around. So they ask a lot of good questions. They ask, you know, a lot of stuff about self-improvement and, and taking care of themselves better. And uh, that's that's kind of, you know, the purpose of what we're doing. And what I'm doing there is, you know, we, we use the motto, you know, be better today than you were yesterday. You know, I think a lot of people have been preached to too much about, Oh, just accept yourself and you're perfect the way you are. But that's, you know, what are you, a God? Like, who's who's perfect? Who's perfect the way they are? Uh, if you're not constantly growing uh, and trying to be better, like, you're you're already dead. Like, every organism that exists on planet Earth is growing. If it's not growing, it's it's dying. So uh, don't, don't walk around a corpse, you know, improve, be better. And obviously, you've been very vocal about the Ali Act coming to MMA, and it, it, John, it seems like there's just been no news on this. Um, since you're really involved in that, is there stuff going on behind the scenes that just really hasn't been talked about? Well, we uh, we get we get backed up and slowed down by government. You know, government is a large bureaucracy that takes a lot of time. So when you know the government shuts down or they go on break, uh, you know, it slows everything down. So we have to just keep pushing, keep moving forward. We still have a lot of support. Uh, things would move faster if more fighters stood up and uh, got involved, definitely. But I think this is just an inevitable thing that will happen, whether it takes uh, one year or 20 years. It's something that's going to happen. Do you think that it'll come into effect at a point when you're still fighting? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because... Uh, you know, they're going to have to reintroduce the bill this year, I believe. Um, and, you know, we got to talk to some more people and see what we can do. So still floating around. It hasn't been killed. Um, you know, we got the lawsuit going on also. So there's a lot of avenues. But, you know, things things move faster when more people are, are speaking out. You know, squeaky wheel gets the, uh, gets the oil. Is it frustrating that, that more fighters have not – um, been vocal in the public uh, like you have? Yeah, it is. Most, the majority of guys are sitting around. They know something's wrong. They know it's wrong, but they're just waiting for somebody else to do it. They want somebody else to take care of things. Um, and uh, it's not going to happen. If you're not if you're not actually working and taking care of things yourself, it's not going to happen. So, you know, I, I'm pushing for what needs to change and what needs to happen. But, you know, at the end of the day, if guys really want to earn their market share of the revenue, they're going to have to speak up. But, of course, up first is your fight card up here, Bellator 220, the main event of the fight card, the final quarterfinal matchup in the welterweight Grand Prix tournament. Of course, the event will air live and exclusive on DAZN. John, as always, I appreciate the time, and uh, good luck here in the fight. All right. Thank you.